Hey, what's going on everyone? In this video, I'm going to be doing a review of the Sony BDPS 1100 Blu-ray Media Player. Now, for those of you that want to see an unboxing of this device, I have already done that in a separate video, and you can find a link to that video in the video description. Now, the first thing I'll be starting off with is the remote. Uh, the remote itself is pretty well designed. You get the power on and off button, navigation left, right, enter, a home button, and of course, you have play, pause, a Netflix dedicated button, and a dedicated button also for the Sony Entertainment Network app, which I'll show you later on. The remote itself is pretty well designed for the most part. Again, you can use it as a universal remote. As you can see, you have an on-off button for power for your TV, if it is compatible, of course. The remote isn't the most comfortable I've ever used, but for the most part, it is well designed. Now, while the device is on, it consumes only 8.8 .8 watts of power, and while it's off, it only consumes 0.2 watts of power. On the right side of the device, you have no ports at all. Now, over on the back of the device, you have a bit of an odd situation here. As you'll notice, there's limited ports. Now on the far left you have the wire attached for power of course and a little bit further you have the LAN 100 which is the internet port for internet connectivity, an HDMI output port and a digital coaxile audio output port. Unfortunately there's no optical audio output and of course there's also no secondary USB port and no analog connectivity. So in order to use this media player your TV must have an HDMI port. And over on the left side you also have no ports on the device either. On the front of the 1100 you have an eject button, a play button, a stop button, and of course a on off button which illuminates white when the device is turned on, as you can see. The Blu-ray tray also supports DVD and CD playback. And the last thing on the device is the only USB port located on the front of the device. For those of you wondering which file types are supported, I'll put a list in the video description. That list is actually taken from the Sony website. Okay, so one thing I want to mention that's very important is that this device actually has no built-in Wi-Fi adapter. The only way you can get internet is through a wired internet connection. So that might put a lot of people off but this is actually one of Sony's most budgeted Blu-ray media players available. Now in terms of audio support, this device supports Dolby True HD and DTS HD codecs with support so you know, if you have a system with 7.1 channels. As for the interface itself, you'll notice it's very similar to say the PlayStation 3, uh, which Sony refers to as the cross media bar interface. Um, it's very fast, very responsive to use, easy to use. However, I'm not liking how a lot of the apps are mixed up, um, they're not in alphabetical order, so if you're looking for a certain app, it could be kind of annoying to go through them, especially considering you cannot bookmark certain apps uh, as, a, say, your favorites if you want to access them quickly. Now on the far left, you have the settings menu, which is pretty much your generic stuff. You can address the screen settings, audio settings, uh, basically network settings, there's a whole bunch of features to go through here. I'm not going to go through all of them because it's pretty generic stuff, but you have a lot of customization and control over the device itself. Now media is pretty much categorized in terms of what type of media it is. For example, photos are filtered by photos, music by music, and video by video. It's pretty straightforward. And of course, if you plug in a USB stick, it's all filtered through their specific type of content. When viewing pictures, you can use it as a slideshow, or you can just simply control the uh, picture changing speed with the remote control. Now in terms of music apps, you have your pretty much your generic stuff, however you got some of your more popular apps like Pandora. Keep in mind that the apps available will differ depending on which region you live in. For example, if you live in Mexico, the apps you might have access to will be different from someone living in, say, Canada, for example. So these apps may differ compared to uh, you depending on where you live of course, but in the video section you have more popular services like Netflix, Hulu, Vudu, and of course there is YouTube, but as I mentioned it's all cluttered. Um, but if you look carefully, well actually you can because I'm going to skim through them really quick, because the apps available under the video section is absolutely ridiculous. There's just too many for me to go through. So if you want a more specific list, I suggest you just Google it and you know find out if you can find it, but I'm not going to go through all these apps, there's just way too many to go to. Now if you go over to network, you can't download more apps, uh, unfortunately. Even though you have the primary apps, you can't download additional ones. However, you do have the Opera Store, which basically allows you to access Opera services, which gives you access to more apps. Once this Opera Store is open, uh, it gives you access to a ton of additional apps, if, as if there wasn't enough already. Unfortunately, many of these apps can't be downloaded onto the hard drive of the device. In order to access them, you basically have to go back to the Opera Store every time. Over on the Sony Entertainment Network section, what you basically have is apps exclusive from Sony, which basically, for example, if you select Video Unlimited, it allows you to access movies for a certain cost. Again, these movies will differ depending on the area you live in, but you have access to some of the most newest releases on Blu-ray or DVD. Unlike the upgraded version of the Sony Blu-ray Media Player, which is the BDP S5100, which I also have, and I do review, I'll put a link to that review in the video description, there's no web browser built in here. 
Uh, whereas the 5100 does have a built-in web browser, it has two USB ports. In fact, I'll make a comparison video, you guys can watch that comparison video. When it comes to USB media playback, say video for example, no matter how sharp a video I put on this media player, it handles it just wonderfully and the output of the video quality is absolutely stupendous. This media player has played every single media file I could throw at it, whether it be pictures, music, or video, especially video. Uh, the, you know, my media player, the Western Digital TV Live, Whatever that media player can play, this media player can. This is one of the best media players available. Unfortunately, there's something that might put off a lot of people. And one of the things that might put off a lot of people is that I can't find any network playback support at all. Usually, uh, what should happen is in the 5100 model, again, which I review separately, uh, what I would see up here is my wireless router. If I have a USB stick plugged into my wireless router, I could access the files there. Or I could access my PC which only allows Windows Media Center playback, but the point is, at least it had network playback. The network media playback st problem stems even further. And what I basically mean by this is, for example, on my phone, I could take content uh, via DLNA and stream it to the Blu-ray media player that's the 5100 model, the upgraded model. However, on this model, the 1100, I cannot stream media content from my phone to this media player, unfortunately. So it basically supports no DLNA at all. There's absolutely no network connectivity in terms of home networking playback whatsoever. Some saving grace to this media player, of course, is internet content, which is basically Netflix, Hulu Plus, again, depending on where you live, and other apps like YouTube, which actually run fantastic as long as you have a wired connection to the back of this media player. Uh, Netflix is great to run, it's very quick and responsive, and same with Hulu, so let's just jump into Hulu now. The Hulu Plus app is another app which has pretty quick responses time. Uh, it's very quick and easy to use. Has access to your subscriptions, your like your favorite shows, and all that other good stuff. And of course, once an episode's up and running, it has pretty decent control. So let me get something playing for you guys. As one would expect, the Hulu Plus app outputs some great quality video content. Of course, if HD is supported in the show, you're gonna get some great picture quality playback. And of course, controls are easy to navigate by using left, right, enter. And of course. It allows you to control the video, play, pause, and rewind. And of course, the last important app I'll be demonstrating for you guys is YouTube. Now, I'm not really a fan of this type of YouTube layout. Uh, this is Google's solution to YouTube on TV. This is actually Google's YouTube Lean Back app, which I'm not really a fan of. Of course, it filters things out pretty well. And on that, you got your more generic features as search, which is obviously very important. I just find it a bit slow and cluttered looking. But uh, let's look up something from my channel and show you how it runs in terms of video playback. So I have a video playing here for my YouTube channel, and what's important here to realize is that it does support HD playback. However, what I notice is that video being played initially is kind of blurry. It takes the media player a few seconds to catch up, maybe with the YouTube server, and then it plays HD quality playback after a matter of seconds. Of course, that might depend on your internet connectivity and how fast or slow your internet connection speed is. You also have controls in your remote to fast forward in 10 second intervals or rewind, play, pause. So for the most part, the YouTube app is okay when the video is playing. I just find the general menu interface a little clunky. Okay, so on a final note, I just want to mention that in terms of USB playback, I mentioned that it plays almost everything. However, I did have trouble with my four terabyte external hard drive. I assumed that there was just way too many files on the hard drive. This media player simply couldn't handle it and it wouldn't read it. However, my 1.5 terabyte hard drive it was able to play it fairly well and it was able to read all the media content found on the external hard drive. But other than that, it's time to break this review down to its final score. And I'll give this device a 5 out of a 10. And here's why. The pros of the device is that physically it has a very attractive design, something you would expect from Sony. And considering it's a Blu-ray and a media player 2-in-1, it's fairly compact. The interface itself, which I showed you, is very similar to the PlayStation 3, is fairly easy to navigate. If you're not tech savvy, don't worry too much because you have stuff filtered by videos, pictures, music, etc. Speaking of the interface, this device has one of the fastest interfaces on a media player I have ever used. It's extremely quick. In terms of USB media content playback, this device has played it all. It has yet to fail me in terms of playing any type of video file, especially all the HD files like 12 gigabyte MKV files, for example. It plays it just great. Some of the most popular streaming services like Netflix, Hulu, YouTube are available, which is pretty important to a lot of people. But keep in mind, as I mentioned before, these apps will differ depending on which region you live in. 
The Opera Store, while not the greatest source for accessing additional apps, the point is it's still available. You can access more apps online by going through the Opera Store. This device did however have some cons unfortunately, and it had many of them. The first is that it has no analog or optical audio outputs. As I showed at the back of the device, physically there's no audio optical output, and there's no an analog output. So if your TV does not support HDMI, or if your stereo system does not support Coxal Audio, you're in big trouble if you own this media player. Considering there's a huge amount of apps available, which is great, Unfortunately, there's no way of favoriting them, which makes you have to go through the huge list if one of your apps are way down on the list. Sony had designed a TV side view app, but they refused to support this device for it. However, the 5100 model, which I review separately as I mentioned, is supported by the TV side view app, which is available for pretty much Android devices and I believe iOS devices as well. There is unfortunately no built-in web browser. This could have been fixed with the software update, but it's just purely Sony being lazy and wanting you to buy one of the more expensive Blu-ray media players. And most importantly, there's absolutely no network playback at all. Whether you're trying to stream something from your tablet, phone, computer, heck even my router as I mentioned, there's no network playback at all on this device. So even if you have a wired internet connection, you get internet content like Netflix, but in terms of your home network, you get no playback at all. So that's my review of the Sony BDPS 1100. Remember, if you guys want to see the 5100, which is far more superior if you want to see that review, I've also reviewed it. A link to that video and a link to comparison of this 1100 to the 5100 model video link will also be in the video description. So that's pretty much it. If you guys found this video useful, be sure to check out my Facebook, Google+, Twitter links in the video description. Hit the like button, it does help. Subscribe and thanks for watching.